Welcome back to the last time the Insider Knowledge Podcast, hosted by myself, Baya, and uh, Sword of Icato, although he's currently asleep, so we'll see about that. Um, Hopefully he will come in later. Uh, as well, we have uh, HZ here, um, that will of course give us some insight on what's up next with Ara, because um, we saw the news, uh, the news don't really seem good for us PvP and Jurors, uh, and that's no, the reason not. why this is the last uh, episode of this podcast. This episode, uh, this podcast was made for competitive and for PvP, and unfortunately, uh, with the switch of the focus to PvE, uh, this doesn't really make sense to continue. Um, so, um, what, yeah. what are your thoughts about the announcement, guys? Uh, I mean, I don't know. The announcement itself, I actually thought was a very good announcement. It answered all of my questions. It was very direct. It was very blunt. The content was absolute dog shit. Like some of the worst content that <laughs> I've ever read in my life. But I do have to give them some props. And I think the community was a little bit ridiculous where they were like, why did the PR team spit out a bunch of PR slop? And it's like, it, it's a fucking PR team, guys. Like, yeah, they're going to tell you, like, we're refocusing on player versus environment. It's like, no, you're cutting PvP and PvE yeah. just gets the same stuff. Like, this, this isn't refocusing, it's just elimination of that branch. It's like, yeah, it's just removing PvP branch and just, like, keeping the PvE at least alive. Yeah. It's like... There has, still has to be some updates, right? Especially for company like Rara, they don't want to be like, LRR just like completely cut off, you know, like completely die, because like, that's not good PR stuff, right? They, yeah. they cannot do that, basically, so. I do uh, think, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I completely understand, like, going through, like, stages of grief for this. It's a very frustrating time, but I do think a lot of it was like, why did the PR department put out a corporate PR speak thing? And it's like, brother, like, what were you expecting here? I mean, I get it, but it was, I mean, I think a lot of people would be like, they could have saved the effort on the video because it just was fucking nothing. You well, know, like, like yeah. it the didn't do anything awful. to quell. Yeah, they didn't yeah. do anything to, like, quell any feelings. It kind of just built resentment towards them. Uh, I don't know. Like, it was, it, it didn't answer anything. I just, ha I just hated the whole video. Like, yeah, I just kind of, like, viewed that, like, the video was, like, intended as, like, the the intended audience for the video was people interested in the path of champions pivot and the intended art um audience for the article was the people who you're telling them we killed your section of the game um and i thought like i, I mean yeah i like watched the video and was just like oh this is pr slop i don't give a shit about this but yeah i don't really fault them for putting out some pr slop in this situation <laughs> Yeah, it also especially like just felt weird because like there was like two apparatus, you know, like especially yeah. like you know some there was some criticism on Dave. Dave was in a very bad bad spot there because like you know he's still continuing in the right, right? He cannot be like man, you know, like he was like he was in bad spot here then, and yeah, it's it was a sad video to watch definitely. Um, it was like a lot of people had like very small expectations of that uh, announcement, and like we were like dooming so much. And I think even though we were doing so much, we still got kind of disappointed. Yeah, I mean, because especially I think... like they being like, you know, we are not going away, right? Uh, they are also pushing the one day earlier. We felt like maybe there's actually something, but yeah, like, yeah, it was yeah. definitely like a roller coaster of emotions. I thought sure. I had one of like... the most negative expectations going into this, and it was worse than I expected. I was expected competitive is dying. You get a skeleton crew of competitive. We'll occasionally do some patches. You'll get like updates as they help Path of Champions, and we'll run tournaments with no prizing. That's what I was expecting, and like it was worse than that. Yeah, it was. We definitely. It was definitely the meme where it's like our expectations were low, but holy fuck, yeah. like you really came underneath those because I really thought that we were. I, at least a lot of people were just kind of like in the worst mindset. But like, yeah, you know, like, yeah, competitive getting cut is probably something that'll happen. But it's like, I mean, they already have the infrastructure in place, so they just shouldn't really cut it. And then it's just like, actually, we're killing everything PvP related. And yeah. it's like, oh, uh, I mean, yikes. The fact, that, the fact that gauntlets died was like, okay, like. <laughs> We can't even uh, pretend to have a competitive system at that point. And, like, and then also, like, yeah, also, like, there also was then, like, our voter article, right? Like, starting with two world champions, right, that we had. Yeah. Uh, that was also funny. Um, then, like, also the 
if we have ranked even like that was like it was like you're still gonna have casual and against ai and we were like okay that's, what does this mean <laughs> I, about ranked by this so. i did think that one was a little blown out of proportion i never read it as like ranked was dying i just assumed like you could still grind the ladder to see funny number go up but like i mean that is small comfort uh but i did think that was like a, a little bit of a unreasonable interpretation mm-hmm. but yeah yeah i mean article yeah. was uh, I, pretty bad i know me and maya talked about it like basically right after it dropped and um there was some emotions there was definitely a lot of like heated emotions going into it and um now that i've cooled off i, I i'm just i just so tired of being angry that i'm just exhausted by this whole situation and depressed it's like I mean, like you can't you can't filter your anger at anybody. You can't like there's the people that are there in place now. You know they're not really receptive to feedback. They say you know we'll be listening, but it's like yeah, bullshit. You know, like people who are listening were like Julian and Matt and and Ruben, and these are the people that actually know what's going on. The fact that you've cut this completely already tells us that like you're not really listening. You're just kind of appeasing and fulfilling the promises that you've already made. Right. So like, obviously they can't really cancel the, the invitational. So they're, they're not going to, and they made promises to the players who are getting cards. And if they canceled that, that would be a huge shit show. So they're not going to do it. But I gotta be honest, if I'm Talpinator and Chedia, like I have no fucking desire to make a card anymore. Like, yeah. like it's like, Oh, uh, I guess I'll make my path of champions card that'll come out in a year like i I don't know the most cool prize ever like i think like that could have been done and like then like being like this it definitely sucks for them um i guess you can do some meme maybe with this now but you know it it just sucks yeah i definitely agree with that and yeah i definitely like i don't want to like you know blame anyone if on that as well like and even from their like apparatus i I think they did fuck ups but i think they didn't do the fuck ups now i think that they did the fuck ups in like 2020 and 2021 i think that's the time that is my strong feeling like i strongly believe upper riot fucked up i don't really blame um the people who like would really be called like lor devs like the people working on the game i mean maybe like the executive producer like it was dave guskin and then um umbridge i don't think umbridge was executive producer i believe it was jeff jew who's right uh, you're going like way back then yeah yeah Uh, but anyways like maybe the executive producer at some points in time shares some blame but like i don't know the the thing that like really frustrates me in hindsight was like frequently we got this communication from like riot where people were like someone with more clout it'd usually be like sunny majin maybe grappler would basically come out and be like hey i'm really concerned about the monetization of this game and i saw this like exact comment two three times like it was more than just like one person i remember it very directly with a majin one but basically coming out and saying like i'm concerned about the monetization of this game here are some ideas that I have on how to improve monetization. Take them or leave them, but, like, I'm concerned. And we would get this, like, direct communication from Riot of, like, don't worry about it, things are fine. And we definitely got this impression given to us that, like, okay, I don't think anyone was delusional enough to think, like, LOR was a resounding success. But we definitely were sold this story of, like, LOR is doing okay. Well, we lost by it. Um... We got told this story that, like, LR is doing okay. And then it, like, clearly isn't doing okay and never was doing okay. And it's like... Yeah, that was <laughs> weird because, I, I mean, there was, there was a lot of people came out and said, like, oh, yeah, we've known forever that Lore is losing money. But I'm, like, pretty positive someone on Reddit was, like, Lore is not losing money or something. One of, like, yeah, the writers like, was, like... We're I mean, not losing money or something like that. I don't think and they it's were completely changed. Yeah, I, I don't think they were so strong to say that it's not losing money, but I definitely remember comments and pushes to the community that were basically like, hey, we see the concern, but like we just want to ensure you like we are stable. And it was like, okay, maybe they're losing some mm-hmm. small amount of money, but like it was very clear from the communication that it was like LOR is not just like bleeding money and we need to solve this problem. It is something that can be worked on over a long time period and like Mm -hmm. 
If the article came out and said, hey, LOR like really had a bad swing in 2023 and we just don't see it recovering, so we're doing this hard pivot. It'd be like, okay, that tracks with what I've been told. But when they come out like, LOR has been losing money and has been losing money for its entire lifespan and it's never recovered. I'm like, motherfucker, yeah. you lied. And like, yeah. specifically, like, we tried to help you with this problem and we're like explicitly told, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. And it's yeah. like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah <laughs> everything was not fine. It, and I, 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 so yeah. I don't know like what else Riot could have wanted because they have the perfect player base. They're like we were just like, oh, no more skins, no more guardians, no more boards. Well, fine, we're still here. We're playing the game. No one's leaving because of those things. And it's like, okay, so you've reduced the amount of costs that you've like your overall because obviously they said, you know, everything was costing the money to make more than it got back. Yeah. So like, okay, well you've clearly reduced costs, and it's like, okay, we're all ready to accept no prizing on opens, right? Like we're just like. Cut cut another <laughs> chunk of cost. Where, where are the costs now? Like, wh what is going on? Like, like I know there's still costs associated with making cards and stuff like that, but like, is it really to the point where we think Path of Champions is going to recuperate that at that? Like, I, I don't know. Like, yeah, it, it's it's insane. It's insane. <sighs> yeah, I mean, like, it's just bizarre because like, I, I don't know. I just like definitely got this impression that like stuff is okay and it wasn't, and it's like okay. Clearly, you need to extract more money. And, like, I certainly believe that. I have voiced concerns about LOR's lack of monetization, where, like, I just couldn't buy things. It wasn't even that, like, I was unwilling to. There was not stuff for me to buy. And it's like, mm -hmm. if LOR, like, I believe the corporate speak at this point, because you, you're not lying about having always lost money. That's, that's right, a really right. dumb lie like you were always losing money i certainly believe that and then it's like you had four years of this game being alive and you realized you weren't making money and like what exactly were your attempts to fix this monetization we had prismatics around like a felios release yeah. um which they, were terrible yeah and they didn't workshop them at all and like you released prismatics that was something novel that we added as a monetization option. And we released card skins. And card skins released like two years into the lifespan? Like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but like, I don't really blame the LR team, but I do blame like someone with a finance degree because you're sitting here and you're like, you have a product and it hasn't been profitable in two years. And you're like, not doing an anything? Like, yeah. Well, I guess the, the what they decided to do was, like, they were just going to cut all of the stuff that they make. Like, that was their idea. Like, it didn't make any sense. I, 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 I truly believe if the game was, like, extremely greedy with stuff that wasn't the cards, like, kept, kept the, the, the system for cards, and then was, like, cosmetics, it's, a, it's like a turbo cringe lottery gotcha system. Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> you, you could never get what you want unless you enter like 200 times i think people were like okay and i feel like the game would probably be in an okay space because literally that's what tft does they make the same model thing they just change the colors and then they make like a premium one that has like a slightly different textures and it's like okay just do that for lore like yeah i mean and you have to roll it like i think I it's understand. i think it's easy to come up with like concepts that might have worked and i think like yeah yeah the riot pushback from corporate basically saying like hey we like did some like test cases we did some like predictions and we didn't think this would be worth the cost is like kind of a fair pushback but like my immediate pushback to that pushback is like so you're saying like you had a product and it wasn't profitable and people are spitballing ideas and your solution was like mm, i don't think that'll work and your solution is do nothing um mm -hmm. you know what's not gonna fix profitability doing nothing like, well, yeah. I told I told Baya this and I was like, it truly feels like the people who are at the upper echelons of Riot wanted Lore to fail in its current state so they could have an excuse to move to this, like to make this kind of gigant, gigantic pivot because it they, they feels like they were doing absolutely nothing. And then now that they're making this pivot, they're doing stuff that we've asked them to do previously. Yeah, it's like, yeah, we're attitude. making this previous... But we like, yeah, we couldn't do this now, but we're going to do it going forward 
but also we're cutting <laughs> PvP as well. And I told Maya, like, it, if the game flourishes, they're going to be like, look, it's because we made the pivot to PvE. But it won't actually be that in my mind. It'll be because they did all the shit oh. that we finally asked them to do. And <laughs> they're going to just, like, delu delusion it. Because that's what... I work at a corporation. That's what people who are, like, C-suite and above do. They just delude themselves into thinking, like, oh, we made this drastic change and it actually changed everything. When it's like, no, you made the fundamental changes, which were needed and now everything's better and you're, you're yeah. pointing to the wrong solution but they're gonna be like yeah we're making so much money now to be honest like i think one more decision that they did well was battle pass i think battle pass was pretty well done in my opinion of course there was issue that like it was only once per season like one for even the battle pass didn't last the whole season that was maybe kind of weird on that thing but i definitely agree like i don't like they just didn't try and like like skins got i guess better as well but, yeah, I mean, like, we, I, I don't know. We had broken summaries, and Samir got to skin after month. I like these were still fa fails, and then like we got, you know, they they were like bros don't make money. Yeah, because most of them are not clickable. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not buying not clickable bros. Like, I'm just not doing that. Um, yeah. I'm not buying guardians because I got multiple of them already by uh having butter passes in the past, right? Where we had the guardians. So, I I, I just don't know, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, like. There's like certain things that's like like companies do to drive people to purchase things, like making them available for a limited time, but like the window for limited availability on lore was like way too long. Like like if you want to do Christmas skins, you put them out for a week, not a month, right? And people will buy them. If you want to do like and that's kind of like what they do in League of Legends too, they also raise the price of champions that are just released yeah. for like the first week. And then they lower it to like a normal price. And it's like, it, there's just nothing that's done. It, 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 I mean, we could talk in circles, but like there's also, it feels like nothing got fucking done. Like there's a lot of things yeah. they could have done and there's just nothing. Yeah. Done. Like, I don't know. Like I, I think it is sort of fair. Like meddler is like really pushing back and like the Reddit thread being like, no, no, no guys. We like crunch the numbers. Like, don't worry about it. It's not going to make money. Like we looked into animated cards. It wasn't going to bring in the money. And it's like, you know, you might be right. But like, if you don't figure out how to monetize this game, it's not fucking going anywhere. And like this problem isn't going to go away because you stopped trying to solve it. And it's like, I don't know. It'd be one thing if like, back to like an earlier point, like it would be one thing if this was, a recent development where like all of a sudden we had this like big downtick and how much money people were spending like rotation happened and just shit went downhill but instead it's like apparently this has been going on the entire time and i just look back on these four years and it's like i i would really like to know if i'm correct about this there were two attempts at novel monetization options which were prismatics and card skins right that's like uh -huh. stone it. Everything else existed at launch. Yeah, and they both happened at 2021. But the past first happened in August, I think, of 2020. And first kids were, I think, August 2021. But I might be off a little oh. bit there. I mean, it depends on, like, if you qualify, like, Emporium into that um, as well. Like... I guess Emporium was also a try, but... I yeah, mean, I, it, like, yeah. It I think it, I don't know. Like... I think Emporium and Battle Passes, like, kind of count. But I would put them as a separate thing where it's, like, these are ways to sell stuff you make in a different way, which is worth exploring. But in terms of like, you came up with a product to sell, it's just prismatics and skins. Like, mm -hmm. am I wrong? I do, here? Okay, so now that I'm thinking about it, I do think Gauntlets was originally intended to be a monetization thing. Because you remember when they launched, they were insanely oh, yeah. expensive. Um, with green shorts, and then we were like, hey, we're not going to play this if it's this many green shorts. There probably was a happy medium that, that we could have reached where it's like, most people would pay like five bucks a week to play in a, in a gauntlet, but they, I think they lowered it too much so that everyone's just like, yep, I'm playing for free now. I, but like, I also thought it was like insane that gauntlets were enterable with green shorts. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you can charge me, with that. but like, why green shorts? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, but like yeah. there was also the better gauntlets, right? That I even spent money on myself, especially in the first like season ever, because like I wanted to get the trophies for the 
have opens, right? So I think that kind of worked, but then I was able to have so many of the tokens for the for the better gauntlets that I didn't need them. So it was maybe yeah. also like kind of weird then. But I don't know if there was like meant to be monetizing, but maybe I guess it was maybe a bit the bigger expectation of that uh, to maybe return some money. And I assume that not many people bought, right? Um, yeah. The the access yeah i mean well, like i know in clash you have to buy tickets like for L, like league of legends you have to buy tickets for to play in clash like they could have done something similar than, uh, like yeah. where they have like a there's like a basic ticket and then a premium ticket where you pay more and you get more stuff if you do better kind of thing like i don't know th again we're doing the whole like there's a lot of things they could have done kind of yeah. thing yeah. but um i did uh, want to touch on what raw rock said uh a hundred percent the people that worked on lore were a hundred percent blindsided by this I mean, because that's... i worked with them throughout worlds and i never had any indication that this these changes were coming from what i heard from talking to devs we were just gonna run it back um they with like new, some like... small changes yeah, and this is completely new so yeah. i mean that's like pretty clearly evident from like the lor invitational like if yeah. you knew this was coming down the pipeline, you certainly would not have invited those people to the LOR Invitational. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. maybe you invite people still and you still have the LOR Invitational, but you're not like, hey, competitive seasonal winner. Uh, do you want to talk about Path of Champions? Yeah, like, it was, yeah. like, not planned at all. And, like, it's obvious. I think it just was, like, CEO on the New Year's just, just like, you know, decided to do this. And, like, yeah, he just did it. I, I think... Well, it, it's so obvious that it wasn't planned, I think. Like, yeah. So I know the Invitational was also supposed to be a tournament, and they said they're changing the Invitational a little bit, and I'm pretty sure it's, like, because it's no longer a tournament, it's just going to, like, we're going to show you new cards and, like, talk about our path going forward. Um, I won't know because I, can't, I did not get invited, unfortunately. That, that's, like, um, so crazy to me. Uh, there's a, you also didn't, right? Or... No, I didn't. But... We have, we have Icado.ace, only one, so... I, I guess it's kind of unfortunate that he's not here, so he cannot tell us yeah. maybe more. But you know, I, I they were, were not sure what what name of the tournament is. You know, it was like Mister Event, and I guess <laughs> it's Goodbye Event. You know, in the end. So. Yeah. yeah, I mean, ne okay. I do think saying like, I don't know, the the article has like this section of saying like, is LOR dead? And they're like, no, LOR isn't dead. It's just changing. And it's like, I don't know. From one perspective, I agree. The holistic thing of LOR is not dead. You can play Path of Champions. You can even still play ranked, apparently. Mm -hmm. But, like, competitive LOR is dead. Um, we, we don't have to beat around the bush. And, like, okay, maybe LOR has a future. But, like, I really dislike that there's a bunch of, like, Path of Champions players that are being like, this news is great. And these, like, competitive players are just whiny. And it's like, okay, first of all, it's not that unreasonable to be upset about losing the part of the game that you enjoyed. Also, this is not good news for you. You can have yeah. hope about this. Like, competitive can't have hope. But, like, Path of Champions could be like, I think we could be better later. But it's like, no, you lost, like, half of your dev team. And you went from, like, 30% of the old resources to 35. 90% of the change is that the other 65% is just gone. It didn't go to you. It just no longer exists. Yeah, it's a different game or it's just completely <laughs> gone. And mostly gone, right? We yeah. know about a lot of playoffs, so... I mean, if you think about the largest streamers, right? I mean, like, outside of Sunny, who the fuck is playing, like, like non-competitive stuff? No one. Like... I mean, even Sunny like, is... Kato's like... not going to be playing at the Champions. So, yeah, <laughs> and, and even Sunny is going to be, like, severely impacted. Yeah, like... Yeah. There's, like, you know, like, it was just a thing, like... The PV will get small, like the community. I know there's like some YouTubers that have like 10k subs or something like that, but like the community is so small of PV. And uh, like, there was some like comments on Reddit, right? Like, I'm sorry that I killed your game because I was, you know, grinding it for the. I was grinding because in the end, Path of Champions was the best way how to grind a game because if you wanted to be having the weekly vote as soon as possible, you know, fulfilled, uh, the best way was just playing Path of Champions because you have fast games. Uh, and you get so many, like, XP boosts as well. So, yeah, it's, it's just weird as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to, like, the reasonable Path of Champions players, I don't want to shit on too much, because, like, 
I don't know. I, I do kind of believe that there's more time spent in Path of Champions than um like yeah, conventional like... PvP. I just like I this is still not good news for you. Um it's certainly better than the PvP news, but like I'd be pretty worried if I was playing Path of Champions. Um I mean you might get something similar to what PvP got, which is like a swan song where it like feels really good for a year and you're a little bit confused when everything gets shuttered in a year, but like I don't think I'd be happy if I was playing Path of Champions. I think I would yeah. be like, really got to stick the landing here. I think there's like a reasonable middle ground of, of a good chunk of people. I would say like at least 50 to 60% of the community understands like this is a net negative. Um, I mean, like to everyone. <laughs> um, and I also have seen some very disingenuous <laughs> ar arguments on both sides. I think like we can all just agree like, yeah, Path had more players. Yes, it also has a lot of players that don't play that often and also don't play the monthly leaderboard. But that doesn't mean they don't have a lot of players. And also at the same time, uh, competitive is important to the game. Um, and the content that's created is extremely important to the game. I, I hated seeing like both people be like, both sides just be like, actually, we could have done without either one of you. And it's like, mm, I mean, not really, no. <laughs> like... I'm pretty sure Path of Champions bolstered the game's numbers, and I'm pretty sure competitive also bolsters the game's numbers uh, from a viewership and content perspective. So it's like the fact that one's going away is just going to ex extremely and negatively affect the other side. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. yeah I, I mean, I don't know. People are kind of like correct in that like Path of Champions spent more money, but like Path of Champions got monetization. Like, very honestly, like, I made an effort to spend money in LOR. There was a cosmetic that I saw and I was like, hmm, that seems kind of interesting to me. I'll buy it. What the fuck was I supposed to buy? Like, I bought... But that's the thing. It's like, when you do these kind of free-to-play games, you're supposed to hit whales. So you have to have something uh -huh. that, like, just costs, like, two grand, right? Like, like you just have to have something that I costs, have... like, a hundred bucks. And people are just like, I, I have the $100 thing and people will flame you because yeah. like, ha, you waste $100 and then you'll be like, ah, actually, I'm rich and you're poor. It's a very common thing in free-to-play games and yeah, there's no, nothing like that. As well. they have <laughs> I the guess, yeah. In TFT, they have fucking cheapies that cost like so much as well. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Though, like, I, I have a friend, have it, I have a friend who prismatic every card in every deck that he played in a tournament. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think he stopped when he like kind of drifted away from LOR. Although he might have still did this. And he basically viewed it as like, I'm supporting a game that I particularly enjoy. Um, and like, I think he seriously played like competitive for two and a half years and spent like $600, which is like wild that you have a dude like attempting to wail and is sell giving you $600. Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? <laughs> like, like the crazy thing is also like I spend the most money on the thingy that I wanted to play ages tournaments or like other tournaments on Americas because I had, I was like lazy to grind. That was like my biggest spending on this game. I think even though like I played this game for four years, I think I'm still under like two hundred bucks. Like it's so crazy like to me. Like somebody like I mean, me should have so many more times than like what I spend. It was also like a definitely like a day one thing. As someone who came from like Hearthstone. I remember when I got on the Legends of Runeterra and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to buy all the cards like off rip. And I literally just couldn't do that. And I was just like, mm, that blows. Um, I'm going to take a break until tomorrow when I can buy more cards. Oh, yeah. So it's like, um, like th there's just, like you said, there's nothing to buy. I mean, I always think of like when I played Genshin and I just used to like buy all the characters and like, yeah, it was a lot of fucking money, but I had fun doing it. And I had, like saying to people, I have all the characters. There's just nothing. There's just nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't it's know. Like, in the article, it was like, you know, we don't want to become the classic card game, but like, I, I think it's better to like be classic card game than die. You know, like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, I like, uh, let me see if I can find it. There was a very good, as much as I will like just rail on the stupid ass monetization, it's not actually the biggest mistake that I think Upper Riot did. The biggest mistake I think Upper Riot did is 
when you're like releasing a product and this isn't necessarily a game but like anything you get one shot to get momentum because like you release a game there's a lot of wave of interest due to pure novelty and you basically get this like opportunity to hook people where like you just get a bunch of free marketing because people are like oh i'll try out that new game i'll give it like four hours or something let's see how it, let's see how it is um and riot basically used that opportunity and blew it on foundations and like yeah. did you play foundations it it wasn't yeah. great it felt like a beta because it was like i don't it was a beta yeah I don't blame the devs because like they were very direct and honest. This is a beta. We fully released with rising tides. Imagine if like that level of like support wasn't increased. We did the same marketing push. You just delayed it until your game was done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if, like yeah, I mean, the first part was on foundations then like, I said, like, I think the biggest mistake were made in 2020 and 21. I think these, yeah. like, there were big, big mistakes made. And, like, that's something that we then just, you know, like, that's why the priorities were small, right? Uh, at, at the first. And then, like, of course, the monetization, even of the small priorities was then poor. But I think, the, like, the biggest mistake were made here. Um, there was also, okay. like, you know, something that I, I even tweeted about was, like, the Tales of Frontier thingy. Uh, that used to, that should be Legends of Frontier art. But they have League yeah. of Legends name in their name. And only way how you can, you know, like how it's like LR ad is like one second of LR logo and description where it's like play on there now. You know, it's like, no, bro, this is League of Legends ad. That's not the Legends of Runter ad. Especially like, you know, especially funny looking at like Ionia, whereas in the video you have Akali. And like Akali is still not in LR, right? Like to this point. So like it's it, it's just like it's so many weird decisions, especially in Ireland, and I do agree. Like the game I played in, in the in the open beta, I, it was like fun because it was something new to me. But man, like when you look at the graphics, how it looked, like how it was even played, the meta game it was very un non balanced. The balance was very poor. Uh, there was things like Alnax, if you remember, uh, Ezreal Karma was also crazy and stuff. So like, it wasn't that good game. Like how it is currently, for example. So, um, yeah, I think um, someone brought up a good point in the fact that, like, I think it was Sleepy Panda, where it's like, with the new direction that LOR is heading, can you even really call it Legends of Runeterra anymore? No. Because <laughs> it's not the same, like, at all. Um, there's, it, it's all focused on this one game mode that, like, was just an experiment at one point, and now, like, I don't know. It just feels so fucking bad. Yeah. Oh, also, while you pull up this graphic, I do want to point out that I also looked up World's viewership numbers uh, throughout the years, and I think it <laughs> there was a point where World's was getting, like, 45,000 views um, mm -hmm. peak, and this last World's got 7,000. Um... I think like my match six. was the most watched ever, I think, by the way. I saw some statistic that my match with... I think it was with Eric, he was the most watched one ever, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was actually finals, uh, because there was different worlds. Anyway, uh, but yeah, it, it definitely fell like down uh, with the worlds as well, like when you looked at it. But yeah, you can see this was like the... At the start, it was the... You know, there were 10 year anniversary, right? At the first. This yeah, like they the, had like the like access, limited yeah. time beta. There was like mm -hmm. limited time beta with streamers only. There was limited time beta that was just like open. This was like full open beta release. So like foundations is just released and you're allowed to play it. Mm -hmm. This right here is where LOR released. Yeah. Mm. Like Clearly, marketing did something, but like, I don't think the early access part was ridiculous. I do think like this, and then also having this, probably not the wisest move. But like, we just sent people into this, and like the game kind of yeah. sucked. And then like, yeah, the game was bad, we kind of got an okay game, but like, what are we doing here? Like, none of this, none of this matters. Like, mm -hmm. we yeah. and like. I don't think it's unreasonable for Riot Upper Management to be like, we can't do another marketing push like that. And it's like, fair enough. Why did you do it when you did then? Like, 
<laughs> Are you dumb? <laughs> That's what they in the corporations call like a learning opportunity. Um, and, and you know, when you fuck up big, you say like, "Oh, we learned from this." But um, I would like to see. So there was a, I think there was a, there was a statement something about how the marketing was just kind of there to maintain the current pay- player base. Yeah. You guys remember hearing that statement? So um, I don't want to be like stepping on any toes or ruining any relationships with Riot, but I actually just know that's untrue. Um, I know that this last expansion was designed and targeted to bring in new players. All the marketing material was external. There was even um, promotion on the website, uh, like the actual Riot website. Mm -hmm. So I I don't know if like this is more... (laughs) corporate obfuscation or like covering their asses or something but it's like it genuinely feels like uh they 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 actually probably tried to do another marketing push and it just didn't pan out like with this last expansion Uh, i mean i don't know it's bizarre to me because like in one hand like they seem very open and like they they put really unpleasant questions to answer on the faq and you could very easily just not and like Another one is like Meddler like responded to someone on uh like Reddit that was just like an absolute roast of a post on Reddit. And it's like mm. you could just not respond to that. And I think it'd be wise from a PR standpoint to not. But like on the other hand, like some of this stuff I don't think is particularly arguable as like a good decision. And I'd be really curious to see like why did you do it like this? Like, I agree with the Riot Upper Management. We can't spend, like, millions of dollars to get Disguised Toast and Raynad and all the Hearthstone streamers to try it again. We can't do this. But, like, very reasonable take. Why did you push the game so hard when it was clearly unfinished? Like, I don't think the devs were delusional. I don't think they were sitting there and being like, hey, guys, game is really good right now, and it's going downhill with Rising Tides. Like, it just get the marketing push out like i think they were be honest with riot upper management it's like why did you blow your budget then (laughs) well i mean like how many people do you know that played league of legends on launch that are still playing today like none i am legitimately the oldest well i don't really play league anymore but like yeah when i played league i played in season one um, I did not play in right. lunch, but I played in season one, and it's like, I was always, like, the person who's like, Jesus, fuck, you're ancient. <laughs> like, Right. But, it, and same thing with TFT. Who's been playing since the foundations someone. of TFT? Yeah, like, like the game player bases change, and, and they grow, and those games got marketing pushes years down the line. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't why wouldn't LOR get the same thing? Like, you don't expect a game to build its initial player base from launch and then maintain it throughout. Like, that's insane thinking. Like, nobody operates that way. So why was why is Riot saying that that's that was the intention? Like, I, I'm it's, confused. It's so, it's so I do agree with that. Like, it's so weird. And like, something as said we were asking for is like a little LOR in the leak land, and we're gonna get it after we kill the game. Uh, mm-hmm. Like. <laughs> I, I just don't know. Like it's it's so weird as well that way. Like, why is Alaron now in the league? Like, what wasn't it earlier? Like, I don't know. It's, um, it's, it's so confusing to me. And yeah, and also like you know they were like you know PVP player base is small. That why do, did you try to maintain it? Why would you maintain it? Like we not be losing money on the player base that we have. So our marketing strategy is to maintain it so we lo- still lose the money. Or what is? I, I yeah, don't understand. I mean. It very much just like felt like a lot of the confu- the like decisions were just baffling. Where like they kind of make sense if you're like, I don't know, dozing off playing some ladder in the middle of your business meeting and you're like, oh yeah, that that sounds like a reasonable take. Like uh, yeah, we don't want to spend money on a game that's struggling or whatever. And it's like if you don't want to spend money on a game that's struggling, like there's two choices. You spend money and you try and make it not struggling. Or you shut it down. And like, the worst part about this is like, this is the business major take. Where it's like, shut the game down or spend the money to fix it. Those are your two choices. 
and you're sitting here and saying yeah. like the business major take is the right one and i'm sitting here and i'm like you're making a dumbass business decision either like either man up and shut the game down or man up and spend the money like <laughs> there mm-hmm. isn't a third option like yeah it's a classic business thing i mean everyone's heard you got to spend money to make money so like yeah. you can't just like expect yeah. it's like putting your money it's like investing your money into a company you know is going to go downhill and you're like well yeah i'm losing money on this investment but surely like it's going to bounce back and it's like I mean, well, from the uh, business perspective no yeah <laughs> from the business perspective it is perfectly valid to say like we do not believe in lor's future so we're shutting it down mm-hmm. but like I agree. you didn't do that <laughs> like what are mm-hmm. we doing you kept this game running for four years then we're like mm now now is the right time and it's like to just just make the decision like <laughs> yeah i i it, it that's why i'm like i'm like can you even call it lore anymore just spin it off call it path of champions it's its own game like i think that is the better decision because like it uh, is the best decision you sit here and you're like oh i'm interested in path of champions and someone's like yeah you go to like legends of Runeterra and download the client they're like is, isn't that uh-huh. game dead and you're like, no, yeah. no, like Path of Champions is alive. And it's like, okay, this is just like in, inherently a terrible sales pitch. And it's like, you, you, you would be better off just killing the game. Like, yeah. Well, uh, so the, the especially new, the new with how it's set up now, because you have to, like you said, you have to go through Legends of Terror, you have to download it. Like, there's like two thirds of the cards you can't even really play in Path of Champions most of the times. So, like, why not just like, but those cards reduce the download size of the game and like and then just completely remove all the other options besides shop and path of champions and versus ai and like literally that's it like and then you get like vehicle it, vault, like you know and like you're like okay okay i'm playing path of champions what is this vehicle vault for oh it's for a mode that we don't support anymore you know like <laughs> we don't want it anymore like do you have your handful cards enjoy them but they're users too but you know good luck you know, yeah, and what's the point of green shards anymore? What's the, I mean, like, there's literally nothing. Wild cards, what's the point? Like, there, there's, if you have, the, like, after this next set, right? There's no point. In, it's not a collectible card game anymore. Don't call it a CCG. Don't call it whatever. It's literally just, like, a bad Slay the Spire. Yeah. Like, and that's the issue, I think, also. Like, the, the, yeah. the, 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 the game is not good enough to be its own oh. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, that is pretty bizarre. Like, I know some people enjoy Path of Champions, but like, every time I play it, like, I'm not super into Slay the Spire. I've certainly played like a decent amount of it and I've had my good times, but like, Slay the Spire is dramatically better than Path of Champions. And like, yeah, Slay the Spire is probably the pinnacle of its genre, but like, even the other ones that have come out, like, spark some interest. I know like Monster Train is a big one. Um, there's a few other that like definitely replicated the success of Slay the Spire. They are dramatically better. And it's like, what are we doing here with Path of Champions? Like, I don't understand. Yeah, it, it's like, so so people, I don't know how many competitive players actually play Path of Champions, but I play Path of Champions quite a bit. Sorry for killing your game. But um, like, it's so it's so easy the game is yeah. so easy it's not a skill diff at all it's literally like a grind diff if you're not doing well you just grind the champion till you get more levels till you get more stars and then it just becomes super fucking easy like sometimes you low roll on an aurelian soul run and that's like you're like okay well next time i'm definitely gonna be because there's no way i get that unlucky again and then you do and it's like okay like there's there's nothing to, to, to do it's just a time sink it's not a skill intensive game and i know they're bringing a hard mode and stuff like that into it but it's like i don't know like i, I have no in, intention of ever, just like going over and trying the new hard mode after it's probably something that you also need to put tons of time into and also probably now spend money to actually beat um yeah. well, so. i guess the money will be like you know make it faster right like that's gonna be the money spent right i assume or the new monetization system like you know, you can grind it five times. Oh, you can play it only once and spend, you know, ten bucks, uh, like something like that, right? Well, I think it's it's going to be so difficult to grind 
that spending money is the only option, right? Like that's what I would imagine they're moving to. Yeah. It's because if you want to get to six stars, you know, it increases the amount of shards you have to get for each stars. And it's like, okay, well, if it's like you need a hundred shards to get the final shard, or like get the final star, people are like, no, I'm just going to spend 30 bucks because that's going to take me three weeks. And so like, I, I think that's the intention, but like, I don't know. Like, it's just like, why not just go play a game where you, you buy the game once and it's actually skill intensive. And then like, you can like, just do it again. Characters, I guess that's the slang point of now the part yeah. of Champions game. It's like, you know, like Cell League Champions, right? You're going to play as Jinx, right? You love Arcane, you can play Jinx, right? I guess that's maybe the intention now, but um, I said, I, I basically never played Path of Champions. I played it for cards because I said it was the best way how to acquire cards on an Ake account. Uh, but I was just like, I was like playing any back to back to back to back, just some same monthly mm -hmm. challenge. I'm sorry, I was one of them also. I killed you the game. killed my game. Yeah. I oh, sorry, well, okay. I, I suppose I do have to confess. I did play like six games of Path of Champions once. Um, however, unlike these two dirtbags in Call with me, <laughs> I did not continue to play Path of Champions. I played it once, decided the game mode was not for me, and moved on. But... Yeah. So here's your. I, I don't know. Yeah, I think. Um... I think maybe we should move to the next topic because we could, we could probably do this for four hours. Yeah. Without talking about like this but shit, yeah, like, the well, same well, circles well, over and over. Yeah. Let's try and <laughs> be stronger. Yeah, like well, we can do that. Let's try and be a little bit forward linking. Uh, we can either start <laughs> with Red because he's got by far the most uh, optimistic one, or uh, we yeah. can end with Red. I don't know, like, I, because I'm just gonna be like, the reality is, is I'm gonna be like, eh. For Aegis side, it's not really a big deal. Um, we lost a lot of our relationship with Riot uh, because we were doing the, the tournaments, but like in terms of sustainability, it's not like Legends of Ruterra was like really the pinnacle or the, the peak of our system. Um, we have sponsors. We just got another one. None of them are sponsoring Legends of Ruterra. So like, it, it sucks in terms of like, because me and Hirsch love the game. That's the main thing is like, we love you guys. We love the community. We love the game. We love the devs. And it's like, that's all gone, right? That That's the biggest thing about like, where I think HS's future is. This is like, how can we run tournaments for a game that's basically not the same game anymore? Like, uh -huh. we don't know the devs. We don't know the community. They're all leaving. Like, we don't know the game because it's not going to get any balances at, like, balance patches or anything like that. So it's... I, I, I told you before the college was off that, like, Aegis will definitely, like, reevaluate at the end of this upcoming Aegis season and see, like, where the community is. Like, how many people are just, like, dipping. Because I'm sure, like, by the time playoffs comes around, especially Bracket, we're going to see a lot of people are just like, yep, well, that was fun, guys. I'm out. And it's like, yeah. so, I mean, uh, yeah, it, we'll have to see. I have this, um, like, I'm very conflicted about, like, the Aegis season. Not, like, I really appreciate that you guys run it. It's just, like, personally, I don't know if I want to engage with it. Because, like, on the one hand, I really would like a real conclusion to this phase of my life. On the other hand, mm -hmm. I also just want to mentally start moving on. And it's like... I don't know what to do because, like, I'd like to support you guys. I don't have a problem with, like, ages at all, but it's just this very frustrating experience, so. Yeah, so that's kind of, like, why we made it the way it is, where if, if for people who don't know, like, we're accepting every single team. Um, The entry fee is, like, whatever you want to put into it. So, like, if you join and you're like, I don't know if I really want to commit to this, I'm just not going to put in an entry fee. That way, if I drop, it's, like, it's not a huge deal. Like, that's all fine as well. Like, it, it really is kind of just like, um, here's the last hurrah. I don't want to say last, but it's just kind of yeah. positioned that way. Here's it, the last it, hurrah. Do you want to play? Like, let's all just, like, play while the game still has an expansion and and balance patches. And, and then, like, we can all just kind of, like, take it out back and, you know, bury it at the same time. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, 
I would um because it I, definitely feels really fucking bad to like knowing that the last open was the last open. You know what I'm saying? Like like yeah. it's like we didn't have any clue. And uh, of course, like we're gonna let Ikado f- win the last one, no fucking shot. So we have to run another event, right? So um yeah. <laughs> I mean that's I the don't main thinking. I don't think it's unreasonable for the last competitive open to not have prizes. I do right. think it is incredibly shitty of Riot to competitive players to basically be like, the last open you played, that was the last open you play. And you're like, mm-hmm. like, you can run one more with no prizing and like, no prize, no broadcast. I think the competitive community would be very appreciative of just, yeah. we're calling this an open. And it's like, we'll do the broadcast. Right? So, so, so after the new cut, you know, like after the new set, just, you know, like, yeah, I assume that, you know, we would do the community maybe broadcast again. I I don't know, like, of course, like we would need like ages help over that, but I think like people will be willing to, you know, having one more, one last stand with the new champions with I mean, the new set that we have already done, you know, anything... the devs that we love did it that are not already, that are not part of the team anymore. Like, yeah. It just sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything more, I think, would certainly be nice, but like, I think people would be incredibly appreciative if you did stone nothing other than it's an open. If you fucking put it on like smash.gg and you're like, we will not even give you the tournament tab. You can run this, but we will call it an open. I think the competitive community would be like, God bless. (laughs) I don't know. I mean, just like, I think I, I'm, I'm hoping because in the system, there is two more opens scheduled, right? So there's, and this is a league, whatever. Uh, there is one like February 24th, and there is one planned for March 17th. So from what I understand, right? So if those do end up happening, and the expectation is set, like these are the last two, I think people would be really appreciative, right? Um but god damn, if it doesn't happen, like, it's gonna feel so fucking bad, dude. I mean, the problem is, like, <laughs> the article was, like, I, I understand there's stuff on, like, calendars, but, like, the article was just, mm-hmm. like, not close, where it's, like, for now, competitive PvP will be put into hibernation. This includes gauntlets, ranked season rewards, tournaments such as the Runeterra open system. It's, like, that's gone. And it's, like, as, as, Ooh, as, like, yeah. how much do you cost you like how much do open cost you how much ranked rewards cost you like uh, am i like so weird or like i, I yeah know. i do wonder what the associated cost with like running that tournament uh actually is because i know it's not like i know like they have people ready if shit goes bad but other than that which we haven't seen in a long time other than that like it's not like they have labor assigned to it, right? Like, um, it's automated, right? Like, it's just automated in client. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, I got my own name tag, Pog. Yeah. Um, like, it, I, I truly do wonder, like, how much, how much does it end up actually costing them? Because, like, I feel like if it's if it's a system that's already in place and it doesn't cost anything, then like. I don't know, just fucking run it. Like, who cares? I guess, I guess that just means that they want to get rid of us, right? That they don't want to do anything with PvP and they were like, I, we don't want you. Go away. This is just part of Champions game. This is how it feels to me. Like, I, I just do have that feeling. Yeah. I don't know, like, mm-hmm. how it feels to you, but yeah, it just, that's that's my feeling of that, of that situation. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think there are costs, like, Sure, maybe a few bucks. Maybe like you have to pay somebody that's gonna put in the system. Like, okay, this is start day, this is end date. Maybe I don't know. Like, <laughs> I doubt it. I mean, it's already like in the system. Like, yeah, but, like they but, populated like, even, like, it at the beginning opens, of the right? year. Like, I mean, like for a future opens, for example, for next. Oh season, yeah. Because we have still ne- next set, right? And then you could still make maybe three opens for that set at least, you know. Uh, so. Okay, so like if I were making a game, <laughs> and maybe this isn't how it is. But the system would probably be like enter a date and time and we will run like kind of thing. Like, I doubt they have many people that require like hands on to get that shit going at this point. Um, 
And I said that, but maybe like, I'm yeah. wrong. Maybe it's actually like really intensive. Who knows? Like, yeah, I guess we don't know yet. But like, yeah. I would assume that like so that like after so many opens, after so many seasons, you have something like that. You just like put in dates and you have it done. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, back to ages as we were talking about. You know, um, last season, probably maybe we'll see. Um, starts on the 16th, signups close on the 14th. Originally, signups were closing on the 15th, and then I realized, oh, we kind of have to do a draw show. So that'll be on the 15th. Signups will close on the 14th. Get your teams in. We're accepting everyone. It's probably going to get real funky when it turns to like, probably not going to get even groups. Um, but it should be fun. And, um, you know, hopefully it won't run like too long because I don't want to like drag people on for like a a 12 week season but um yeah I, I think it'll be fun and and everyone will have a blast um uh-huh. yeah so just join just join just <laughs> off just join <laughs> just, just join yeah well you're gonna guess i guess i guess you're gonna have in the description you're gonna have a discord ages uh invitation so you can check it out and you can maybe build up your you know your team and join the league i said uh, oh, you, you can, can farm with how much money you want, you and can... all the fee uh gonna go into the price pool, what I understand. So. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent of the entry fee is going to the price pool, and like we said, like the pri- the entry fee is like whatever you want to pay. So like, if Drizoth rolls up and he's like, "I'm dropping ten grand on this," okay, well, ten grand goes into the price pool. If Baya shows up and he's like, "I'm paying one dollar just to like spite you guys," well, one dollar is going in the price pool. Like, I mean, I did uh, donate like four hundred bucks to a Master in Terra tournament once. I did oh, like okay. just win the previous one. To be clear, I wasn't just like yeah, yeah. <laughs> have four hundred dollars out of the goodness of my heart. We have two Mustang mm-hmm. Kunta opens winners here, right? So, you know, yeah. Based. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm happy that I managed to win like a big major tournament in my time. So yeah, certainly sort of thing. So, I mean, I I think this was before we started podcasting, but. Um, I have like a art of purple fish, wiggly purple fish on my wall. I am so happy I got that. Um, like at the time, I was happy I got it, but like I could have, I I could quit LOR for ten years. LOR could die after two, and I would still hang that thing on my wall. Mm-hmm. It's just the memories, right? Like. Yeah, it's I mean, been four years, right? I guess for you a little bit less, but yeah, it's, it's been an amazing time. Yeah, I mean, it's been a long time. It's a card I resonated with. It's a card that brought me a lot of success throughout the years. Um, I mean, I guess like literally the entire time I've been playing the game, I've been associated with Purple Fish. Because, like, I mean, I was playing a little bit before Purple Fish released, but like, I definitely made a name for myself with TF Fizz, and it's been Burble Fish since. So, um, a lot of now as well. Um, but I have plans. Hey, I have plans going forward. I need I need to set the record straight because the community has been incredibly wrong about this. Back when Nami got nerfed, so many people were like, "Drizoth's gonna be in shambles." This fucker. This was my love, Nami. Was the thing that let me play Burble Fish. Mm-hmm. She can rot. <laughs> but, um, I don't know what my plans are. I really wish I knew. Um, I'd like to try. I, I need a competitive outlet. I know that I'm a very competitive person, and um, I don't know this probably has never come up in the podcast. I'm pretty open with it in public, so if you've hung around, you probably know. I have a somewhat serious heart condition um saying that people will just always assume it's either more serious or less serious than it actually is relevantly i'm gonna have to have heart surgery at some point in my life and i can't play sports that's like the relevant impacts to my life um not exactly the greatest time in the world but it really isn't like horrific um i mean at some point i'm gonna have heart surgery which sucks ass but like and until that it's like fine i just don't play sports but I'm still pretty competitive and I like cannot play the main competitive outlet for most people. Like 
the if you know the like doctor's waiver that you'd always have to get signed to play sports in school, the doctor would never sign that for me. Or he's like, under no circumstance am I letting you play sports. Um, so I need a competitive outlet. I need something to sink my time into. And I don't know what that is. Um I've pretty much always played CCGs, but none of them are compelling to me at this point. Magic's pretty frustrating. Yu-Gi-Oh! I have some complaints about. Pokemon doesn't look the most appealing. So I don't know. Like, the options that sound good, Teamfight Tactics sounds okay, but I'm a little bit frustrated with Riot right now, so I don't really want to go to Teamfight Tactics. Pokemon VGC sounds okay, but I just don't know. I'm going to try some stuff. Yo, Grant! That's fair, Grant. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon VGC is like... It's kind of like a card game almost, in a sense. Um, yeah. It, it, it's pretty fun. Um, it seems it's very, very complex, analogous. Too. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it, a very complex game. There's a lot of like smaller um, like CCGs, like Lorcana, Flesh and Blood, One Piece. The problem is, I'm in fucking rural Indiana. I don't like it. If I'm playing a paper card game, which I am interested in, I need a paper local scene. There's stone nothing. We barely have a magic scene where I am. I'm like, uh. Yeah, I think, I think, like, if you were going to go lurk on a route, it would definitely be like Pixelborn for however long Disney lets that stay up, um, which is their online client. I was talking to Mo about it, and he was like, well, it's been up for a year, so, because Mo is, is all Lorcana now. So he's like, the, the fan made client is up for a year. They do online tournaments. They get big numbers. So I, yeah. it's something I've been looking at. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's like a non. It's not like something you have to definitely buy into as a paper card gamer. Kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, my frustration is just like paper card games are appealing to me. But like paper card games need the paper scene to justify it. I'm willing to play an online client for a paper card game I play. Mm -hmm. But as soon as it's not a digital first card game they're like a lot less pleasant to play online. And if it's sitting here like, hey, you can get into a paper card game exclusively online, it's like, mm, mm, I don't know about that one. Um, yeah. I think it's a, I would say like, I played a little bit of Lorcana. It's it's kind of piss easy. Um, <laughs> I started beating people like right away. Um, I, I think that's I think lore really has a good foundational skill set for like transferring into other games. Um and I will say that if you guys are ever interested um in playing TFT, I will plug that Aegis TFT is the best tournaments for TFT. The guys who run that shit are extremely passionate. They even do lands and shit. It's kind of crazy. So like if you guys ever want to get into TFT and you're like tired of lore, I can help you transition. Um, cause those guys like letting people learn as well. Like they like teaching people. Um, I have so have, many like... people like inviting me to TFT, man. It's crazy. Like, yeah. especially like, you know, I was like, we talked with like Panda as well. Uh, in Pitches Panda, of course. Um, mm -hmm. the good old caster. Um, yeah, but yeah, mm, I guess my plans, uh, I guess I didn't say my plans yet. Uh, it's like, I'm not really sure yet. It might be TFT, it might be Marvel Snap. I'm not really sure. I think it's gonna be probably one of these. I need to I need to try the One Piece and Rokana. I want to try these two. At least, you know, give, give them give them a shot. Uh before I make my decision. But it's probably Marvel Snap or TFT to be honest. Um regarding the content, I don't know how much I'm gonna continue myself because um uh, I think I was really tied to, you know, LOR. It was like four years. I'm i I'm here since the start. I was playing since the you know open beta right in 2020. So I started when I was 16, right? And like when you're watching this, or like for me, it's tomorrow. I'm 21, and it's like it's it's kind of crazy, right? Like it, it was my it was my uh, you know teenage year. So um, it's gonna be interesting switch for me. Uh, I never had like any other like you know I was never so tied to like game, right? Like for example, there's a people so much tied to like Mar uh to uh, magic right um and i never had something like that and, like it was my like first game in like in that sense so yeah um I, i'm kind of i'm kind of excited to maybe like you know uh ride my range of that but also i'm sad that yeah i has to probably go out of my life I, I want to have something that 
I want to compete in. I, I want to be something that you know has future, and that's something that just a lot doesn't give me now. So we will see. I don't. This is my personal opinion, but I don't think Snap is that game. Like, yeah. it's it's like the hot thing for sure. But I don't like in terms of competitive. I don't think it's like something that's realistic. I know they have stuff now, but I don't yeah. think long term they will. Competitive Snap like, has seemed like it's going nowhere. Like. Both in terms of, like, it's not doing well, but also in terms of, like, the second dinner. And, like, Marvel seems just mm -hmm. completely disinterested in trying to make competitive happen. Which, like, is a fine take for the company to have. But, like, I'd have a hard time it's... saying, like, I'm going to make this a competitive outlet when, like, the company just seems disinterested. Uh, well, it makes sense for them not to do it. It's literally a money fountain. Why would they throw any of that money away they have no reason to change anything that they're doing yeah. so like it's like why would i make a competitive system for a game that's like basically made for zoomers it's done in like a minute and a half and then like you just pump them out and then like there's no reason for people to be like yep okay yep snap uh let's let's put one million dollars into the competitive scene it's like that's not gonna drive any purchases so it's like yeah yeah, I, I, can, I can see that for the issue. I, I can definitely see it as well. So, like, I'm not like that. I want to go snap, but I, I, I do enjoy that game. But I, I definitely have the. I think the also the system, the competitive that there's like with the you know like that, both player has ten cubes is pretty damp as well. So like, um, I, I have definitely some issues with it. So that's why I'm not like decided as well on that yet. Um, yeah, bizarrely, I feel like snap is like a better competitive system if it was just ladder, where it's like, <laughs> you can just bet cubes like the cube system sounds like interesting when you're talking about ladder and then as soon as you're talking about tournaments i'm like what the fuck is this cube system doing here well like, you know what the tournaments they run on the cube system too the tournaments do yeah, yeah it's just like yeah. does it, it it feels like super like shoehorned in to like kind of make a competitive system work i don't know yeah it's just like so much like push to be like cubes and like uh, it's it's very weird. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. Like the system is very weird. Like get, I think when you're behind the so doom very often. Like it, it's kind of weird in that sense. I, I definitely agree. Yeah, um, like, I think it's a symptom of the game because I actually think the system is kind of creative considering the limitations of the game. Um, because it 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 still keeps the skill expression that is like betting cubes into the tournament. Yeah, um, which is like the fundamental part of the game. So I don't know. I I don't know if I just I I don't know if I agree with like it's a bad system. I think it's just like a bad game for competitive. Like that's yeah, that's where I, it is. I actually like, think Snap is like Snap like isolating the competitive aspect where like the skill expression is entirely with the cube mechanic. Like I don't know. It, I found it very wild when people were like particularly hating on Marvel Snap and people were like, "There's no skill expression in the games," and it's like. Yeah, the literal cards have very little skill expression. The skill expression is entirely in the cube system. Like, it's still there. It's just not where you're expecting to see it as a card game player. And, like, I think that's a solid design choice. I, like, respect Second Dinner's, like, game design quite a bit. The monetization is, um, horrendous. Um, although... It, I don't know how much I would like specifically criticize the monetization and how much I would criticize the like clear um, inbreeding between balance and monetization where it's like, oh, we have a, we have a yeah, really strong cool. card. Why don't we make it series five and refuse to nerf it? And it's like, okay. And then balance. Like, you can yeah. just buy it for $50 then. <laughs> yeah. Balance. Maybe is okay. I don't really know. I don't think I have an informed opinion about Marvel Snap. As soon as these like balance and monetization start inbreeding, I'm like, that I don't well, know about. I mean, that is it, a yeah. huge. Yeah, we, that is a huge criticism of the game because I've heard people say like, oh well, whenever they release a new card, they just like they make it broken, so you have to buy it, and then they'll nerf it yeah. like a couple weeks later, and it's like. It, so it's like they're driving you to definitely you have to definitely purchase it but then it's like eh, it'll be irrelevant in a few weeks i remember when they they did the whole like um they released that card that just completely undoes the last turn of the game <laughs> and you get to redo it and yeah. i was just like that sounds cancer as fuck because the whole idea of snap is like you're supposed to be like oh and this is my final turn this is where all the shit pops off and then you're like 
they make a card that's like, okay, well, I get to see your final turn, and then we get to do it all again so I can prepare for it. It's like, yeah, that was a, <laughs> that was something. That was fucking insane. Yeah. I mean, uh, Snap, Snap seems like so good as like a casual card game. Like, just oh, yeah. engaging, playing some games. Sometimes you get some cubes, sometimes you don't. Like, legitimately, I look at that and I'm like, that game looks phenomenal. However, the problem is, I want A, a competitive game, and B, um, I really don't want to sink that much money into a casual card game. Like, yeah. I, I'm... I guess it's a, it just clicked that I'm like Zoomer, right? And it's, it's a Zoomer game, so yeah. it kind of, yeah, I, I, I guess it also kind of clicked in that way, but yeah. I, yeah, I did yeah, for that. Uh, so, uh, uh, also myself, yeah. Okay, uh, it's product... a good property, it's a good IP, it's made for Zoomers, it's on mobile. Like, it's just like somebody in a in a think room of like a bunch of people who knew how to get money out of people just for like, here's what we got. And it's like, okay, we got Marvel and we got one minute games and we got like hella yeah. monetization. And it was like, that's the perfect game. That's the perfect game. Yeah. Like, so, okay. so I got a product offering for you Baya. Um, I take some game that is like a uh, generally accepted to be good. Um, uh, I'm not sure what game that is. Maybe like chess. I, I'm certainly not going to put any effort into this game. It's just going to be like some game I can copy and paste into my client. And then um, I'm going to make it. Oh, chess is actually perfect because chess is like a display resolution is literally a square. So uh, to make this fit on your phone, which is clearly not uh, a square, um, I'm going to occupy the center with a chess board and you can play chess. And then on the right, I'm going to put Subway Surfers. And on the left, oh, I'm going to put a satisfying video. <laughs> Where's my money? I'm buying that, man. <laughs> oh, oh, I got That's a monetization option. The monetization of this game, you can play chess as much as you want. It's literally free to play chess. However, if you don't give me money, um, I turn off the videos. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I thought you were going to play an ad between every move of oh. chess. <laughs> no. <laughs> the videos just go away. You're going to have clock, you know, you know like you're going to have ad. You know, you cannot... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> taking all your clock. That would be hilarious. Oh, man. I'll call it Zoomer Chess and put it on the iStore. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's fucking... Yeah. Unlucky. I, I don't I'm I, I just think about like we talk about these bad games and I'm just like, man, Laura was so good. Just fucking yeah. it just fucking feels <laughs> bad, man. Yeah, it's just like I, I maybe I'm still like not like that, like you know, like like it still maybe didn't even click my mind that like yeah, it's it's just done. Like it does no more. I don't know. Like maybe that's like the ages like, you know, and that's it. Like and that's like I guess it was amazing time though. I enjoyed so much. I met so many amazing people, but is it just yeah. gone? Like, uh, yeah. Well, <sighs> it sucks. Every uh, that's why I hope, I hope everyone plays in the Ages League. I I get literally no benefit out of it, but just like it's just gonna be so much fucking fun to just oh. like have everyone playing and just like it's gonna be chaos. Like shit's just gonna be wacky. Like we've already decided that like. We're gonna run internal until the expansion hits, and then we'll switch over to standard. Just like we don't even know what point of the season that will be, but like, like it's all just gonna be a little freeform. It's all gonna be like fun. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm I'm excited for it. Um, we've already got three teams signed up. I'm hoping for, you know, at least twenty nine more. That's my hope. So, yeah, I do think we can get them. Um. Do we have something or um I don't know. Um I will say that I messaged Riot hoping to get unlocked accounts for people in EMEA and APAC to play in the Aegis tournament. And then I also asked for an invitation to the invitational <laughs> so, because um I could just drive down, it's literally like three hours away. Um and get my own accommodations, but you know, like I just want to know, like, can I just show up and will you let me in the building? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird at the end of the way, but yeah. Um, it's I just awesome. want to, I just want to see. To be honest, I just want to go to like meet all the people because, like, when oh, we yeah. did the NYC broadcast and I met all the NYC people, that shit was so sick. 
And then it's like, okay, well now I get to meet all the content creators and, and the, the players that won and some yeah. LA locals. They're like, gonna have some meetup, right? Uh, there's gonna be some meetup with uh, Maji and Grappa and Sunny, right? So I yeah. guess yeah. go there at least. I don't know. It's I'm sad. not gonna drive down for one day to see three people. <laughs> like, 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 that's not happening. It's just gonna be more people there, but you know. I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad because like, I don't know. My my sister lives in the area that like Riot is, and I was always thinking like. I didn't know, like, who exactly I would, but I was like, eh, if I'm ever, like, headed out there and I got time to kill and it's not just, like, I'm, like, there for a day and go see my family and then move on. I was like, eh, I should, like, try and find an opportunity to head onto the Ride campus and see if, like, I can chat with people. Even if it's, like, not something like the Invitational, just be like, they've got a coffee shop in there and it's like, can I just, like, go get some coffee and talk with people? That sounds like fun. Well, they do tours, um, okay. and I know the website says, like, the tours have stopped, and which is, like, a carryover from COVID, but the rioters have assured me that if you just ask for a tour, they'll give you one. Okay. Like, well, um, I don't know. With the current aftermath, it's like, A, yeah. do I care? B, B. is anyone there? Anyone there? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I, I don't know. I'm not, like, Teamfight Tactics and League just don't, particularly appeal to me in terms of like games to mmo like i'd probably play the mmo when it comes out i don't know if i'd stick with it but like i don't know by far the most interesting stuff um that comes out of riot to me these days is like every now and then i'll see a glimpse at what like industry analysts are doing and like uh game stats spaces and that's like really interesting to me i don't know if it's interesting to other people but it's interesting to me, um, but that's like all the league team pumps out that I'm interested in. So, I, you know what I? Here's the thing about TFT. I, I think it's a great game, but oh my god, the content creation side surrounding TFT is like literal cancer. Anyone, I cannot watch anyone stream TFT. It is so bad because they're they're all like carbon copies of. Soju. Soju. And Soju is the most annoying person to fucking play. <laughs> like, I just community man like that's man fucking Twitter like man like they have they've met they've read meta for twelve hours, man, and like holy like the Twitter is on fire, man. Like yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'll tell you from like the from talking to people who work in, in the TFT space, like Soju's I don't you know, I don't want to like start rumors about him, but from what I've heard Soju isn't like the nicest or most respectful guy of people's times. Um, so I don't really like ex like supporting people who kind of do that stuff. And he's already the biggest in that space. Also, the, the fact that the top players can just go around and harass the main developer of TFT until they get what they want really doesn't sit well with me. Um, yeah. I feel for more dog like every day he must get on and just like hate his life. <laughs> like, like, truly. Yeah, but uh, yeah. I mean, the TFT stuff with devs is pretty wild. Although, I mean, yeah. I don't know if any TFT take is gonna be more outrageous than the like LOR is taking our funding, and it's like, brother, brother. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be in the leak line now, right? So we're still taking the. Oh yeah, we're we're taking their funding. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. I, I mean, used to, I'm going to be so sick to my stomach if if Le if lore starts getting like in like in like put in events, they start getting like more skins. I'm just going to be like I'm going to be like irrationally angry yeah, if after if this like, pivot. Path of Champions is going to be like extremely popular and I'm going to be like, yeah. like No, I mean if Ex Path of Champions is popular then whatever, but like if they actually if like the game starts getting like real definite support with like hella monetization, like all the shit that we asked for, I'm gonna just oh, be yeah. like so upset. Like, mm -hmm. if the game succeeds, I don't really care. Like, that's fine. But like, if it starts succeeding because it does all the shit we asked for for years, I'm gonna be really annoyed. Like, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, um, <sighs> I don't know. There, there, there would be nothing that brought me more joy than. Transplants from LOR just like doing very well in the TFT space. Um, but 
I will say that I was I was looking at Lorcana tournaments and Quabachi won like a big one, and I was like, oh, I know that guy. Oh, he's a yeah. uh, he's from EMEA. So hopefully, I, I wish like all the players that I know, whenever game they go to, they just like dominate. That would be oh, that'd be so sick. Yeah, man. Like, like every you know like world champions, you know every <laughs> game is gonna be just <laughs> yeah. and be like. It would be so like, hilarious I talked, to like. I know Baya, like that guy. He's yeah. the world champion. Like I know that guy. It, it would be absolutely <laughs> hilarious if there was like a winner's interview at some relevant thing, and it's like is this is like your first tournament at like X Y Z game. Like, how did you become good so fast? It's like, oh, I was like playing LOR, and they like shut down the game, so I came over here, and y'all all suck. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they're just like, what's LOR? Uh, a League of Legends card game? Yeah. I'd never heard of it. <laughs> I don't think that would like legitimately happen. I think people might do well. Like, I'm sure Majin will do well in whatever card game he moves to. But I, I'm not Doesn't delusional enough. Well. Yeah, I'm not delusional enough <laughs> yeah. to think people are gonna swap games no? and just be like absolutely clowning the competition. So, yeah. By by, I can't wait to see you in the TFT circuit. <laughs> That'll be fun. It's a lot more regionalized, and EMEA has a ton of events. So, like, and I think like Panda's like doing every single one of them. So, like, yeah. you know, you have your ins. Well, I've also Alan, right? Yeah, also Alan. True. I guess I will give it to him. But man, I, I, man, my issue with TFT. Okay, I have my snap issues with like the competitive TFT is like a riot. You know, that's my issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really like pissed on them. So, yeah. It's just a thing. No, that's super fair. Okay. <sighs> okay, let's talk about Ikado's future since he's not here. I, um, I guess so. I'm down to, to edit in, like, um, I'm down to, like, invite him to call on, like, edit in. Oh, wait. His, uh, Hold on. Videos. We have our resident Ikado. Okay. <laughs> I have a furry. Animal. Oh, oh, right. Yeah. You could have just stopped at furry. It's fine. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. There we go. I told um, I told Ikado he should he should try it, Final Fantasy fourteen, and I understand that Final Fantasy fourteen is not a competitive game, but it is like pretty perfect for his community and like what he does and like the kinds of stuff he's in, that he's into. So I, I mean that that man's a riot addict though. So like yeah, that is true. He I do think he'll probably end up at TFT of all places, and he's good at TFT. He's really good. Like um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him winning some tournaments or whatever. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of was not able to make this into the podcast, but we still wanted to have his you know view uh, and the, his future, you know uh, what he's gonna do, and so his like view on the news. So. Uh, that's why I wanted to make this uh, video because he was very important uh, part of the podcast. So welcome in, Ricardo. Yeah, I only came in, you know, uh, halfway through the podcast. Um, you know, you guys had uh, had Mo before, so it kind of makes sense that I show up late to the very last one. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, I guess, yeah, it's like an iconic. I guess we should have then have like Sapphire at the start, but you know, um, Ricardo, unfortunately, you saw the news yesterday. Uh, what are your fears about it? Um, uh, I mean, I think I feel similar to how we all feel right i think it was very sudden i think it was surprising how uh how much pvp and how much competitive has just been completely cut off and we got news today that new champions that are coming out um might only be playable in pass it's um it's very hard to uh, imagine moving forward as a pvp player obviously it's crushing right obviously it's totally crushing i'm uh you know uh -huh. very sad about it it's my favorite game right a legendary terror is my favorite game and uh, to have it, you know, so thoroughly taken away, um, it definitely sucks. I, I imagine you guys said similar things. Yeah, we were like, we are so desperate. Like, we were just like sitting there and like, so, so sad to just see it. And like, you know, just like being talking about it. Like, I think we like, we of course lost a game, but I think something that uh, Red said, it's like, like, we not only lost the game, we also like, kind of lost the people in it. Because in the end, like, the community, like, you know, people are going to go in different games. And then like, even though like, you don't hate the people. You still like gonna not share the time with them anymore, right? It's very often. So, um, 
it, it definitely sucks yeah. also in that way. Uh, so everyone's just you know gonna end up going in different directions, and it's, it's depressing because everyone together, like we made such an amazing community around Legend and Terra, right? Mm -hmm. Like this game has meant so much to so many players. I've met so many amazing people through this game. You know, and I, I've come from other Riot games. I've come from a lot of other games where the communities are so toxic and angry and just, you know, not not enjoyable to be around. But the LOR community wasn't that, for the most part. Yeah, it, it was uh -huh. definitely special. And, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed it, especially with you, Ike, the times that we had together. Um, also on the podcast that we had. Uh, it, it was amazing you. We had, like, countless hours of just talking but you know i care what are your plans ahead what are you planning to do um mm -hmm. what do, what it's are you hard, going to do what it, are you planning to play um we talked about some games as well uh on the podcast when you were not there yeah um i i'm gonna continue streaming uh for as long as i can so you know go check me out at twitch.tv slash xikato um, I, my plan is to have like at least one game that I'm going to, you know, continue, uh, grinding at and trying to improve, you know, right now I'm looking at either like TFT or Valorant, probably TFT. Um, that seems like a pretty fun way to go. Uh, and then, you know, on the side doing a ton of variety stuff, right? Trying out a bunch of different games. Um, you know, some people are trying to get me into Final Fantasy 14. I might end up trying that out. Uh, it was all sorts of stuff. We'll, we'll see what games I end up playing, but yeah, it's... It's uh, I'll keep streaming. Um, mm -hmm. keep making content for as long as I can. You know, I've been very blessed to have a uh, community that's been able to support me for so far, and uh, you know, I don't want to let that go. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like game that you like landing to, like that it's probably gonna be the game now, or d that you want to start with? Uh, is it just fine? And probably fun? TFT. Um, mm -hmm. like I, TFT is so hard because like learning a new TFT set is like such a pain in the ass. But at the same time, it feels like TFT is like the natural progression, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of LR players who already play TFT. Um, there's, you know, a ton of strategy in it. There, it's, it's a very similar game. Plus, like, I've been Masters in that game before. Um, I, I'm pretty certain that I could, you know, at least climb to, like, GM um, pretty easily. You know, in terms of, like, actually competing in it, you know, I'll do my best. We'll see where we end up. Uh, but I do think that TFT is going to be the mainstay. And then beyond that, it's going to be a... Uh, yeah, it was it was like so obvious. I was like, I said, that, like, there's so many people who actually talked about it. Like, it actually was selling me to go on TFT, uh, because you know we have like Panda there, right? Uh, we have Alan there, for example, like these big names. Uh, so, uh, it, it's definitely a place that I can definitely see. Um, and yeah, variety. Um, definitely think that I'm definitely excited to see. I I think you you like have such a like good person that, that like, um, I I think I'm gonna watch no matter what you're gonna do. Uh. But um, something you're too else. Kind, you're too kind, but you're too kind. No, I'm not too, too, too kind, man. I enjoyed some of Valorant. I was like, before I went to sleep, I was watching some of your Valorant yesterday. So. Bro, I was so bad. I, I It's <laughs> going to take a while for me to get not bad at that game again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, is it a great set that you are like such a riot? You know, you love the game. So like, that's maybe. Oh, yeah, apparently, dude. Holy. <laughs> I end yeah. up immediately playing other Riot games after this. Shit. The issue is that, like, the other card games suck, dude. Like, I refuse to go support Snap. I just refuse to support that. What about Lorcana? Or maybe uh, some uh, One Piece? If they have, like, a ton of online stuff, I would be super down. Oh, like, so 100%. you have the issue, like, with or just, yeah, card game in, in game. Okay, I can see that, yeah. Like, in yeah. stuff you don't like. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to do. You know, go I have to go to my fucking local game store. I have to go to regionals. Ugh, <laughs> I, I definitely would prefer online stuff. But, but, yeah. but you are traveling to the um, to the Mister Event, right? Uh, yeah, I am next weekend, so that should be a mm -hmm. that should be a good time. Mm -hmm. um, Hopefully, it's gonna be depressing as hell. Who <laughs> <laughs> are you excited to meet there? You know, like. <laughs> I guess there's some, some there's still still some writers, but who are you excited to see there? Uh, I mean, I get to meet a bunch of other content creators, right? Yeah. Get to meet Majin finally. Um, you know, Sunny, get to Grappler. meet Sunny. Get to meet, uh, yeah, Grappler, Marshall. Oh my God. Um, and then yeah, just a ton of writers. You know, hopefully be able to uh talk to the ones that are still around and let them know how special the game they made was. Mm -hmm. I'm sure yeah. they know. Like Ruben still should be there, so yeah, it, it's it's definitely it definitely sucks though. Uh, and mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I have maybe final question for you. Uh, and that's uh, are you planning to play in the ages? Uh, in the, in the ages league we had to add, right on the podcast. Um, are you exciting to play the, there? Or are you not gonna be playing there? Um, I probably will. You know, serve as like a big last hurrah. You know, for LOR. 
Um, I don't know what who I'm going to play with. Um, I haven't talked with anybody, uh, so I have no idea. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it's hard because, you know, sticking around and grinding the game is going to be difficult. Um, but, you know, so I probably, like, won't put in, like, infinite prep on it. But at the same time, like, it's hard to just cold turkey cut off my favorite game that I've spent, you know, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of every day for the last three years playing and committed to. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll probably play an Aegis. Um, you know, hopefully I win it, you know, last fucking tournament, right? Yeah, like, it was just joking, man. Like, you know, you winning back-to-back -back Open is like, that's just shut down the game, you know, like... I, yeah, I, I, I ruined it. I won two Opens in a row, and I was going to go for the three-peat, and Riot said, nah, we gotta, we gotta shut all this shit down. <laughs> Yeah, um, so yeah, that's for me. Uh, do you have anything to say to our viewers to, uh, to that watch us? I mean, genuinely from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate every single one of you that's stuck around and watched and supported us in any way. Um, it means the fucking world to me. We wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. And, you know, the LR community really was special and really was amazing. And the community aspect doesn't necessarily need to go anywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, continue to support uh, the creators that you like. You know, continue to talk with the friends you've made because mm -hmm. it really was special. It was yeah. a special time. Yeah, especially, like, I think, especially the creators, right? Like, they're going to have the right, right time. Also, the writers are going to be also. So, I think, like, support these people that, like, basically lost their job, right? And, like, it's going to be very hard for them to maybe find the, the new one. But, yeah, thank you so much, Ikara, and back to the podcast. I thought I was so right for that take. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely like, correct. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait to see Ikado next steps, as he said about it, you know. It, it was very interesting, Ikado. Thank you. Thank you for your insight. And, <laughs> um, We're uh, just uh, assuming Bai is going to edit in some incredibly based take, and hopefully he doesn't edit in some incredibly cringe take that I just agreed to. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, Boba Fish killed LRI, you know, and like... <laughs> I mean, uh, well, I saw I saw the Reddit discourse about how the gays are killing LOR, which was interesting. Bro, um, okay, people uh, are <laughs> people are mad about like the Reddit takes where people are basically saying like it's an airport, you have to like announce your departure, that kind of nonsense. Like, people yeah. are very unhappy with Reddit right now. The actual worst part about this situation on Reddit is that every fucking person is just coming out of an armchair and is like, see. See this Reddit post I made two and a half years ago about how Lee Sin was killing the game? Y'all didn't listen then, and you needed to listen to me because Lee Sin killed this game. And it's like, bro, your brain is cooked. Like, <laughs> this shit was not Lee Sin. Yeah, Lee Sin. I, I did see someone come out and say like, oh yeah, I did. I had a Reddit post about like how this monetization is killing the game. It, it's definitely a lot of like, I told you so is coming out. And it's like... <laughs> Of, like, people who had, like, a really bad take a long time ago, and they're just like, I feel vindicated because the game is dead now. And it's like, well, probably not for the reasons that you said, but okay, go off, king. <laughs> or queen. Yeah, and um, I think it's fine to sit there and be like, um, I think you're probably wrong, but I think you can have the take of, like, the reason the game is dead is because of poor balancing efforts. Like, they just consistently did bad jobs balancing, which I, I think it's a little bit of a bad take. But like that's at least defendable. But you're like, they didn't nerf a zero relia fast enough. It's like, it ain't one time. Like, one time does not kill a game. Get off your high horse. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, any um, any thoughts on transitioning to lore 2.0, or are we just done with the lore name altogether? I, I don't know. So like. Florent, um, Florent's a bit of a finance major. Um, so on the one hand, I, I know that you're insulting him when you yeah. say <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Um, so I do have a half of an opinion that the man is like just trying to make a quick buck off people's depression, basically. On the other hand, like he isn't like putting up a donation link where it's like very easy for someone to be manipulated into giving him money. So I kind of want to give him some credit uh, that like he seems to not be trying to exploit people. Um, 
the my honest opinion is that he believes that there are a lot of ideas in competitive LOR that are very good in card games, and he can basically plagiarize them and make a pretty good game and say like, spell mana, great mechanical system. LOR just didn't really do anything with a competitive system that was effective. Um, and that's like my honest take of like what he's doing, and it's like okay, that's a, maybe a little dubious, but like, uh. The worst I can say about him and how he's acting is it's a bit tone deaf. And it's like, I mean, maybe the guy should calm down a bit, but like, I don't really, I, I don't think he needs to be crucified. <laughs> so. No, uh, I mean, mm, there was the most recent post where I was like, okay, yeah, he probably deserved that. But yeah, I agree. Like, I think like if he truly believes he can make a game and I know that it's probably just going to be like lore, but with like monetization, then like. Okay, more power to him. But yeah, it definitely like, <laughs> was like poor timing on some of the things he presented and like yeah. I know some people definitely don't like him. So like yeah, I, that definitely doesn't add that that doesn't only like, doesn't help, I would say. My uh, the grace I give to him is almost exclusively because he does not have a donation link currently. If you had a donation link right now, I'd be like, oh, this, this man's scamming, like hundred percent. But the fact that, like, you couldn't really give him money unless you, like, I don't know, directly PayPal'd him or something. Like, okay. I, I guess this You mean, like, at all dumb. or just, like, like yet? Because there's definitely one coming. Yeah. He's, the thing is, like, it, yeah. if you were scamming, there would be a donation link already. Right. Um, I guess so. So. Um, well, unless you don't have a product, right? Like, if you were, like. Well, you just, like, link a PayPal and you're, like. Oh yeah. We'll honor it for the Kickstarter. And it's like, okay. I mean, sure. that would come off as so sketchy. Like, yeah, like we're it. building a game. Here's my PayPal. If your plan is to like, <laughs> if you're, if you were planning to scam people, True. you do that. Um, and so it's mm -hmm. like, I legitimately believe the man is not planning to scam people. Uh, I would suggest not supporting a Kickstarter until you see some like reasonable proof of work, though. So. Uh, but I think the man kind of just needs to chill out, take a time out, sit down for a bit. And if he wants to try and make LOR 2, he is free to try. Uh, I don't think it's going to go as well as he think it is. But like, their anti-IP is like also like would sell the game a lot for a lot of people, right? And like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I, I, think, it, like... I think there's an okay take of like, I'm going to make a CCG, and I'm going to take the mechanics from LOR that I know were great. Like, spell mana, um, asynchronous turns of, like, attack token stuff. I think you could just say, like, I'm going to make a good card game, and I'm going to take those mechanics. And I think you could do that. Um, I don't know how legal that is, um, but... If you call it something else, I think you're okay. Yeah, yeah, like, you if you're not just it, calling yeah. it spell mana, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not like like it's not like lore's outside of spell mana mana system is extremely unique or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> and so, yeah, skill energy exactly. And there you go, you've leftover skill energy and you're done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can literally call it reserve mana, and I think it would still be okay. <laughs> like, yeah. To be honest, um, I think even spell mana. Like, why would they? Like, I don't think I would care. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, mm. there are I th yeah, there are things in games that you can't just like wholesale copy. So like, I don't. I I think that's a line that you really don't want to play with. <laughs> that that's why I would change the name. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. fundamentally, it's like you could probably get away with calling it spell mana, but you could also just like easily change it to reserve mana, and there's like no lawyer in the world that would try and challenge that. So, it's like, why not? I mean, that's what a lot of ripoff games do is they'll actually just like steal assets. They'll even steal names. And like, if the game becomes like semi successful, then companies will go after them and they're just like, oh, actually, we decided we're going to change the names of all the stuff that's probably infringing on IP. And like, okay, well, I, I've seen that happen a lot in like mobile games and stuff like yeah. that. So, like, they could keep it as spell arena, but they probably won't. It probably won't stay as spell mana. That's what I would imagine. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Well, anything else fun to talk about? Anything not um, fun to talk about? Uh, Do we want to bitch about articles and videos more? I guess there's something not fun to talk is that I want to thank you to anybody who was supporting our podcast, anybody who watched since we started with Drizzle. We started in 2022 with Trey and Safa. Then we move on to Mo, and we ended it's up with Aikado. It's it's been around, yeah. We did a lot of podcasts already, and like, hopefully, you enjoy them. Um, it was something that I enjoyed myself a yeah. lot to do. I don't know. Fun. So, talking about the podcast like reminds me of something that like does frustrate me, and I don't know what to do about it. Like, there's stuff I enjoy doing that like I just feel like I'm losing along with LOR, where it's like I enjoyed streaming, and like I'm not Ikado, I'm not Majin. I didn't stream for a living. I re never really tried to, and I was okay with that. Um, but like, I don't know. I don't think I would enjoy just like playing Dark Souls 3 or something and streaming that. Um, and I don't know what to do about that because like, I'd like to have that hobby of streaming a bit, but not really sure what to do, so. Mm -hmm. And like it, it's much worse for people like Ikado or Majin, where it's like it's also their livelihood that they're lost. I'm just sitting here being like, I lost a hobby in Legends of Runeterra, and I lost a second hobby in streaming. Um, but like, I don't know, I lost more than just Legends of Runeterra, and it's a uh, oh, yeah. sad. There are people who kind of base their whole like personality on the game. I mean, like, uh, I mean, I'm sure. Literally all three of us and many of the people in chat are going to lose friends as a result of this. Not because, like, you dislike this person anymore, you, like, won't tolerate them without the trimmings of LOR, but it's, like, there are people that, like, I only really talk to through the lens of Legends of Runeterra. And, like, am I going to talk to them? Are they going to talk to me without that prompting? Probably not. And it's not that, like, either of us particularly dislikes each other anymore it's just like we don't it's have like, this kind of communal space that we both hang out in it's kind of like graduating high school or like college yeah. it's like i hope you know i'm friends with you because we're in the same class and like we became pretty close friends but like now that i'm graduated i'm going somewhere else you're going somewhere else maybe we'll talk every once in a while but probably not <laughs> like like that's the reality like it, and it sucks because it, it it really hurts me. I think even more the fact that the game isn't actually 100% dead. And I yeah. know that's like a selfish thing to say because it's like, it's like, it, it's almost like there's this window where it's like, yeah, maybe we could come back. But in reality, your deepest heart, heart of hearts, you're like, no, it, it's just never happening again. Like, yeah, like, I don't know. It's going to be so frustrating because like, I made some effort to purge, like, social media and stuff and just be like, like, I don't want to follow these accounts. I don't want to see this stuff pop into my feed. But, like, I know, exactly. like, nine months down the line, there's going to be some event that's, like, sort of competitive. Maybe someone will run a community tournament. Marshall would be a good example. Where, like, Marshall's just going to be like, I'm going to run a community tournament. And I don't want Marshall to not run this community tournament because of this sentiment. I'm going to see that thing because Twitter knows that I engaged with LOR report a bunch. And it's like, Hey, this post's getting a lot of traction. Yeah. Let's serve it to you. And I'm going to be like, fuck, I didn't want to see yeah. that. Like, yeah. I just want to move it's on. It's definitely like, uh, I don't want to get like too dark, but it's almost like seeing like a picture of someone who died or something like that, yeah. that you were like close with. And you're like, oh, fuck. now the mo now the feelings are back, you know, like mm -hmm. I'd moved on. Or, <laughs> And now, and now, like, all these memories are coming back. I, I definitely get that. Like, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Greg. Where it's like, I would like to move on. And, like, I was definitely emotional, like, a week and a half ago. I'm much more stable now. But it's like, I mean, I am trying to move on. And it's like, I don't know. I see people, like, continuing to play on where they like post screenshots or whatever. Some people are climbing the master's ladder board trying to be rank one or something. And like, I, I don't think it's unreasonable to play a little bit into like sw siren song, siren song, swan song of uh, 
competitive LOR, but like I do think you are delaying your ability to move on from the game. And like if that's the choice you want to make, like that's completely fine. But um I think for most people's mental sake, you do need to eventually start moving on. Um because going down with the ship is just not a pleasant experience. So yeah, I was actually, I guess, like, to add, because I have to jump soon, but I will say, like, I was, I, I truly believed that there was going to be some type of competitive system left over that I could help, like, crack, and, like, if there's no worlds, we just run our own fake worlds, right? But, like, hey, it's still the same qualification process. Or, like... I would even run the opens myself and they would be like, they probably wouldn't all be on the same weekend, but like, you know, but now there's like, there's just, there's no hope of that because it's like, there's nothing to latch onto to get people to come and play. Like, yeah, it's just, I mean, this sucks. This whole thing just is like a self perpetuating cycle where it's like people like me kind of want to just move on from the game. So you lose a bunch of competitive Mm -hmm. players. And because of that, like, tournaments suffer. So you can't, like, run grassroots tournaments as easily because people are trying to move on. And then the grassroots tournaments suffer, so, like, the remaining stragglers of this competitive system start trying to move on. And it just self-perpetuates this feedback cycle. And it's, like, it's very difficult to fix that death spiral. And, like, the company Riot would have a difficult time fixing that death spiral outsiders grassroots organizers like god bless people for trying but like i think the ages perspective of like very much doing a swan song for the game of like we're doing one we're we're not trying to resurrect competitive we're doing one and letting it ride as like a final uh chapter in this saga and it's like I, i think you can find success with that because people are interested in having closure but trying to keep this alive i think is going to be a very very tough ask for anybody who's trying to yeah it's it's rough because i i even told like i sat down with like ages management we talked this out and we're like yeah we're just not gonna do an event for four people like we just won't and that's eventually where we're gonna get to it's because like people will just stop showing up it's like okay we'll have four people sign up and i'm like i'm not running I'm not wasting three hours on four people, sorry. Like, yeah. I'll waste just, seven hours on 64, but I won't waste three hours on four people. Like, it's just not a good use of our time. Less, and less plus, right? There will, will not be no new ones, right? So, like, I guess some people yeah. will stay, but, like, it's going to be less and less, and it's just going to be zero eventually. And, yeah, that just sucks. It's, it'll become a game night game. Where it's like, all right, who wants to run? Who wants to run LOR for a few hours tonight? Like, that's it. Like, and and even still, you're like, you probably won't even play standard or eternal. You're just like, let's run Earth <laughs> or something, you know? It's like, yeah, yeah. like, I don't know. It just sucks. It's so bad. I, there's no, it, there's not even a shimmer of hope. That's the worst thing. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It's yeah. like, there's not even a shimmer of hope. And there's just the shell of a product that's left over that we have to say, like, that's, that's not my game. You know, that's that's a different you're gonna game. see. I'm gonna play League and I'm gonna see it. LOR and client, and I'm gonna be like, oh, right, that's not my game. That's like my friends that I'm gonna be playing with, you know, you know, flexes and stuff. They're gonna be like, oh, LOR and client. I'm like, that's not it. That's that's not yeah, the that's game I play. It's that's some fake, it. it's some fake called Path of Champions. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, it hurts. It hurts. And I, I really wish Riot would give it a second look, but I know they won't. Like their hibernation, right? World is like, yeah, it just killed, right? Like, why? It's, it's even if, like, if you know, like, imagine like Path of Champions are crazily successful. Why would you go back to PvP? Just like make the Path of Champions bigger, right? And like, that's the thing, right? Like, oh, yeah, I know an Outlook uh, alert when I hear one, so <laughs> yeah, I got 15 minutes for a meeting, but um, yeah, I, I agree with what you said, Bias. Like, they could talk about like it's in hibernation, but it's like it's kind of like a coma more than a hibernation. It's like 
it's yeah. very unlikely that they're coming out of it. Um, uh, I I do think I tolerate hibernation as PR speak. They're very clear of like we do not expect this to come back, but like we're not gonna say it's like hundred percent dead. Maybe who knows what the future holds, but like I, they were not trying to give people hope. It's just PR speak not being as harsh as it could be. So. Yeah. <sighs> it's so sad, dude. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like, it's just the worst. Like, uh, it's just it's just despairing. Yeah. Disparage. It's the twitchy mode, right? Here I am being a boomer. Yeah, disparage. I was just like a last one of my videos. I was just like here, like sitting, like. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it just sad. Yeah, I told my wife like what was going on, and then I told her about the announcement a few days ago, and she was like, "You know, she's like, it's okay, honey. You'll find another game." It's like, I I don't know if I really kind of want to do another card game, like. I told the guys at Aegis, I'm like, you know, I'll probably just be like in a supplemental role. Like, I'll just be like, I'll just be augmenting what we currently offer, but I don't ever want to get into like a leadership of a specific game again. Like, I don't. So I don't blame her and I don't really yeah. want to criticize her. But like my wife, like watched the video in like an attempt to support me. Like it came out and I was at mm -hmm. work and she was like, oh, I'll watch the video and like try and get a vibe of what's going on. And if you imagine the take of someone who only watched the video and isn't aware of what's yeah. going on, she was like, so like stuff's going okay with Runeterra, right? And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my wife was there when we did Worlds and she was kind of like the house mom and uh, she saw like how much we loved it. And so like, you know, hearing that like it's going away it definitely doesn't like have the same impact to, for her, but you know, I think she'll realize like once I just stop doing stuff, like, and I'm just like bored playing fucking games on my computer, she's gonna be like, "Oh, shit's changed." <laughs> it definitely brought me happiness that I I won't get back. Uh, so that sucks. Well, yeah, I guess it was, let's uh, be happy that it happened yeah. in the end. It was a uh, nice chat. I enjoyed Especially the podcast. If anybody, uh, nice, uh, the fashion management. Yeah. Anyway, um, Any... it's been fun, right? It's been fun, right? This sort. Mm. I mean, if anybody wants, uh, needs help with something, if it's like LR stuff, I'd be happy to be reached out to you for like whenever. But I don't know. It sucks. <laughs> It sucks. Yeah. Something, something friends we made all along the way. Those are the real legends of Runeterra, was the friends we made all yeah, along so... the way. Unfortunately, that has been the last episode of Insider Knowledge. Insider Knowledge was a project that I was extremely passionate about, but unfortunately, we have to come to an end. And for everyone in the Insider Knowledge team, I want to tell you, thank you so much for your support. It was exceptional. It was something that we just love to do. It was something that we enjoyed so much thanks to you. But unfortunately, it has to come to an end. Don't forget to follow Drizot, Igado, and me on Twitter, uh, you know, on the socials, so you can see where we're going to go next and, you know, see us somewhere else.